Welcome to Sens Talk. My name is Brandon and I am your host. Today was the National Hockey League trade deadline. The deadline has passed, however, and Ottawa made a couple more trades on top of the two trades they made yesterday. Yesterday, Ottawa made a couple of trades, like I just said. Travis Hamnick coming in from Vancouver, and as well, Nick Paul being shipped out to Tampa Bay for Matthew Joseph and a pick. If you want to hear my analysis and opinions on those two trades, I made two videos yesterday. I'll put the link to those in the description below. I highly encourage you to check those two videos out. Now, today, Ottawa made two additional trades. The first one was, frankly, a steal for the Ottawa Sanders as they made a deal with the Boston Bruins. Boston sent a fifth-round selection and Zach Senshin to the Ottawa Sanders for Josh Brown, the defender, and a 7th round pick. That 7th round selection is conditional, however, if Zach Senshin plays 5 NHL games for Ottawa this season, that 7th rounder will turn into a 6th rounder for the Bruins. Now, for Ottawa, Zach Senshin, he's an Ottawa native, so it's great to see an Ottawa native coming back home to play for his hometown team. Uh, he's also a former first round selection. If you're not aware of this already, it's pretty infamous at this point. Uh, the draft Tom Shabbat got drafted, I think, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the Bruins had three first round selections in a row. Uh, they wound up whiffing on all three. Zach Sension was one of those three selections because the next three picks after those three first round picks in a row for the Bruins wound up being like Matthew Barzal, uh, Nikolai Ehlers, and Tom Shabbat. So, you know, it's not Zach Sension's fault he was drafted there, but oh boy, I'm telling you, Bruins fans certainly have never lived that down. Uh, I mean, oh, three first round selections in a row, you could have had Barzal, Ehlers, I believe, and Thomas Shabbat. So, yikes. However, once again, Zach Sension was drafted in the first round for a reason. I can promise you, players are not drafted in the first round by mistake. So yeah, you know what? He hasn't really worked out for the Boston Bruins. He clearly needs a change of scenery, and he's getting it now. And you know, obviously his NHL stat line is not that impressive. 14 games in the National Hockey League, only 3 points, 1 goal. That goal being an empty netter, as you can see on the screen here. But once again, they don't ask how, they ask how many. So, I mean, listen, it's a short sample size in the National Hockey League for Senshin. But once again, he's a first-round selection. He was drafted there because he clearly has some skill. And, I mean, listen, hopefully Ottawa can rejuvenate this guy's career. And you know what? We've seen it in the past. A change of scenery can be huge and do wonders for players. And once again, only 14 games in the National Hockey League. I mean, that's not really much of an opportunity there for a first-round selection. And then we look at his AHL stat line, it's much more palatable. 110 points in 243 games down there in the AHL with the Providence Bruins. That's pretty good. That's roughly 0.5 points per game. That's not bad at all. I'm not saying Zach Senshin's going to be a first-line winger for the Ottawa Sanders, but he's also, I mean, he has the potential to be another bottom six forward. So for a player like Josh Brown, who I mean... Doesn't really have much value uh, around the league. Uh, I think this is a nice player for Ottawa where you're getting a guy that can potentially uh, reclaim his old glory days and maybe can find a way to carve out a National Hockey League career here in his hometown of Ottawa. Now, he is an RFA at the end of the season, however, so that gives Ottawa a lot of options in terms of contract extensions or whether or not they even want to keep him past this season. So there's some good flexibility for the Sanders there. He's also 24. So once again, he's young. He's a first-round selection. Who knows? Maybe he can rejuvenate his career here in Ottawa. And, you know, I watched some of his highlights. Once again, these are just highlights, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. But in the highlights, he looks like he's got some good speed and a good ability to read the play pretty well. He uses his speed to get to the open areas, to get a good shot off or put the puck in off a tip. So, I mean, look, these are just highlights. Take that with a grain of salt. But it's clear to me that he has good offensive awareness and good foot speed. So, with those two in mind, uh, if he doesn't play in the NHL, for the Belleville Sanders, who are currently making a push for the Calder Cup playoffs, he should definitely help bolster their forward core. Now, Bruce Garriock just reported that he will be sent down to Belleville to face off against the Laval Rocket on Wednesday night, which means, you know, maybe he's not in the plans for Ottawa anytime soon. But what I just said about him for the last couple minutes still rings true. He has the ability to turn it around here in his hometown. So hopefully uh, he does. I'm rooting for the kid. Now, if you're a Bruins fan watching this, uh, Josh Brown is a big right-handed defenseman with six points on the season. He was often on our third pairing uh, with Eric Branstrom. Um, and listen, you know, nothing against the guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. Frankly, I've spoken to some people in the media here in Ottawa. Uh, they have 
nothing but good things to say about this guy. So you're getting a good guy for the locker room. But when it comes to the on-ice uh, product for Josh Brown, uh, he's a big, big defenseman, but that's really it. He can lay out the body, but he's really out of position quite often. You can see it on the screen here. Here's just one example of him getting beat easily. So, I mean, look, he's a big body defenseman. At most, he's a 6'7 defenseman, so he's more of a depth guy for your bottom pairing there. Um you know, he's not a guy for your top four, of course, but if you were looking for some physicality and some um, toughness and, uh, you know, some size in your back end, Josh Brown will definitely bring that for the Boston Bruins, but nothing more. He's nothing more than a depth player, and I wish him nothing but the best there in Boston because, once again, contrary to what a lot of people say on Twitter, a lot of people bash him on Twitter, frankly, I'm not one to say I don't either. I definitely do as well, um, but, you know, I've heard only good things about this guy from people that know him personally. So, I mean, wish him nothing but the best, and welcome to Ottawa, Zach Sension. The second deal on the day was more of a typical trade deadline deal as Ottawa and Winnipeg connected on a deal together as they sent a Stanley Cup champion to the Jets, Zach Sanford, for a fifth round selection in 2022. Now the winger had 62 games played this season, only 17 points. Now this is decent depth for Winnipeg, nothing more. And for Ottawa, it was clear from day one Sanford didn't really even want to be here, uh, so it didn't really work out. It's good that Ottawa got something for this guy when frankly he looked half the time like he was disinterested in even playing the game of hockey. So, I mean, listen, uh, I'm sure he's going to do much better now in Winnipeg because he maybe wants to be there. They have a chance at the playoffs. But from day one, it didn't really seem that he wanted to be in Ottawa. So it's good that Ottawa cut ties and got something in return for him. Now, it's also important to remember, some people will note, that Ottawa traded a fourth-round selection to acquire Sanford. But it's important to remember that the fifth-round selection from Josh Brown and this fifth-round selection from Zach Sanford can both be used in a packet at the NHL draft to acquire somebody or a, a, a prospect, pardon me, in the third or fourth round. We see it all the time. GMs package two-fifths or one-fifth and a sixth or whatever. They move up in the draft. I guarantee you that's what Pierre Dorian is going to do because why else? You don't need all these late draft picks when you're quote unquote near the end of the rebuild you need to get some guys of higher talent and value so that's what probably is going to happen now lastly before we get to the Anton Forsberg extension this is some breaking news I just want to make sure I read that right Ottawa has acquired a goaltender from the Calgary Flames and his goaltender Michael McNiven for future considerations this guy was in Montreal less than a month ago and he has some minimal NHL experience uh, he had one game I believe in the NHL this year with a 900 save percentage and in 11 games in the AHL he has a 404 goals against average average an 869 nice save percentage and a 4-4 and 1 record with one shutout so I mean look this is minimal NHL experience and what this allows Ottawa to do it allows them to send Philip Gustafson down to the AHL in Belleville to help them not only push for a playoff spot in the Calder Cup playoffs but as well to reclaim his confidence I mean look Gustafson is on a two-way deal for the rest of the season, so Ottawa can fully call him up whenever they so please. But it's clear that Gustafson has had some confidence issues as of late, so this should really help him. And for Ottawa, once again, he has some minimal NHL experience. He's going to be a depth goalie for Ottawa and for Belleville for the rest of the season. He probably will play a few games here or there. And, you know, once again, not the strongest numbers, but in a lost season like this, you just need a guy that can stop the pucks most of the time to get you through the final stretch of games. Now let's get to the contract extension with Sens goaltender Anton Forsberg. Now before any of the trades here for the Sanders, Ottawa extended their goaltender Anton Forsberg to a three-year $8.25 million contract extension. The contract has an average annual value of $2.75 million. In 31 games played this season, Anton Forsberg has a 14-12-2 record with a 9-18 save percentage and a 2.77 goals against average. It's important to note 14, 12, and 2 record. He has an above 500 record this season on one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. Some may say, look, the term is a little much for a goaltender that doesn't have much long-term success in the National Hockey League. But here's what you need to understand. It's an easy contract to move if, and this is if, not when, if Anton Forsberg regresses in the seasons to come. Look, Three years, $2.75 million in the grand scheme of things. That contract is really nothing. It can get moved easily. And frankly, Anton Forsberg has earned every single penny of this contract. And some can say, look at Condon, look at Hammond, look at these, Nilsson. Look at the contracts we've given out to notorious backup goaltenders and look how they regressed after giving them the contract. Fair argument. But once again... Anton Forsberg has been the lone reason Ottawa is not worse than the Coyotes or the Montreal Canadiens, okay? We have to understand that. And on top of all that, Forsberg gives the Sanders a chance to win game in and game out. And with the uncertainty next year in net with Gustafson, will he round into shape again? Matt Murray, will he stay healthy? 
Anton Forsberg provides some stability and net. So this is a great signing for the Ottawa Senators. Sure, maybe three years is a little much, but once again, the contract is easy to move if he regresses. I don't think he will. The athleticism that he shows in the net is incredible. He has a good knack at reading the play, and you know what? Who knows? Maybe he's a late bloomer, just like Senators legend and best goaltender in franchise history, Craig Anderson. I'm not comparing the two, but the storylines for both are pretty similar. Both played in Chicago, both bounced around the league a little bit, and then found their home in Ottawa. So let's see what happens here. I'm excited to see uh, Forzy for the next three years in the nation's capital. Um, once again, he provides stability in net, and that is so important right now when, frankly, there's so much uncertainty in the Sanders' crease. Besides that, thank you all for watching. Make sure to comment below. Let me know what you think about today's trade deadline deals. Ottawa was really active the last 48 hours. I made sure to get as much content for you out there as possible. Uh, I cannot remember a more busy deadline for the Ottawa Senators. But once again, it's great to see they got some assets back for some dead weight. And they also acquired some guys that might be some good pieces for the future. Besides that, thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly of all, turn the notification bell on to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Besides that, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Go Sims Go!